your phone buzzes you awake. It's Monday morning, early, and it's going to be a doozy. Over the weekend, your Agile team launched a new service pack, and it went sideways. As soon as your customers got into the office in the UK this morning, they've already been calling support. Support has nothing to tell them yet, as we haven't found the root cause of the issues. Just something to do with images not displaying in the product grid. We must fix this before someone puts out a bad review. Pressure's on for the QA team to identify the issues as quickly as possible and our dev team to fix it. This means a full stop to our tireless and continuous QA process and all hands on deck to find and replicate the problem. You make it to the office and email after email is coming in in high priority. The VPs you never see are actually hovering like floating honey badgers around the office. It's at this point that a slow smile creeps across your face as you lock eyes on an email. The secret weapon. You were the genius that decided to try Test Studio Test Suite on your last sprint. And behold, there is an email in your inbox from Test Studio with all your regression test list results from last night's scheduled test automation run. From the attachments on the email notification, you can instantly jump into the Test Studio results file. Now you get to skip ahead and start focusing on the areas of the application that are failing instead of wasting your precious time on stuff that works, the old QA catch-22. You drill down from the test list level to the test level and even into subtests and iterations with ease until you reach the failing step. Double clicking that red X opens your failure details and in the failure details you instantly go to the images tab where you can see the expected state versus the failed state of this test you notice an obvious difference between the two images. So you click Submit Bug and Test Studio automatically populates the bug details for you and attaches all of the failure details. And your bug tracking system responds with the notification that your bug is submitted. Now, from the Results tab, clicking back to the test steps, you can jump in and begin troubleshooting with a quick execution of the test. Starting with IE. With your annotations enabled, the test executes, highlighting each element and action as it proceeds to the product grid. You watch as Test Studio's verifications work their way out through the layers of the page, and sure enough, you have replicated the issue where product images are not showing up in the grid. The quick execution completes, and the test has failed at step 8 and 14. Opening the failure details for step 8, you see that it was a pixel level image verification and this one was way off. Clicking on the images tab, you see the product grid for both the failed state and the expected state with a missing product image at the time of failure. The complete test log provides the steps to reproduce the issue, including the browser and version that were used, the passing and failing step details, and the failure details as well as the timing of the execution. Also, you have the separate exception log as well. The DOM tab shows the document object model of the page at the point of failure and is very useful to inspect what was happening behind the scenes when this issue occurred. You flash back to creating this test, how easy it was to simply hit record and capture elements with powerful fine logic under the hood and an easy to use tool set to maintain it for a long period of time with minimal coding required. I mean, the element highlighter gives you such power to create the verifications and timing adjustments you need, and especially with the Kendo UI controls, where Test Studio uses its translators for great bonus features, like many extra verification options against complex widgets. Using the recording toolbar, you created a pixel level image verification. And on the storyboard tab, you can view and export your test images with step details. You remember that Test Studio specializes in locating your application's elements by the most reliable option available and can easily be tailored to each application. And with Kendo UI controls, you had no trouble with even the most complex UI components. You can't help but chuckle a bit when you recall how easily you created element-to-element -element drag and drop steps in your map test for reliable cross-browser execution.
you snap back to reality and realize that you are cruising through failures now, executing a test on the fly in Safari and quickly locating the failure. This time, the element in question has a dynamic ID and was not located with the original find logic. In many cases, there will even be suggestions to help you repair a failing element identifier. On the Resolve Failure tab, Test Studio gives you the ability to fix the broken test step if it is a test issue. So you connect to the live application by choosing an existing test step that uses the element in question. This kicks off the execution of the test again, but only up to the point you have selected. Then the recorder attaches and Test Studio attempts to locate the element with the existing find logic. And voila, even though the element wasn't found by the prescribed method, Test Studio was able to make a pretty good guess and still provided suggestions to help you fix it. You spot something in the suggestions. The actual date appears as a title tag. You quickly add the title and drop the tag index and you hit validate to see if you've got it. Try locating the date just by the title and bingo, you've got it. Adding class, you strengthen your logic, leveraging a Kendo specific identifier. After saving the change, you jump back to the test and right clicking the failed step you choose run from here to attempt to execute from the same spot and continue the rest of the test. Success. On your next failure, the element you just fixed is being used by other tests and steps within the project. So you easily update it for all the tests that use it. You continue to troubleshoot your way through the tests using the run from here, to here, and selected steps to simultaneously edit and record your test. You execute the same test across five different browsers and at one point you decide to add a mouse hover over and even reorder your steps with a quick drag and drop. You're codelessly automating calendars, maps, and even data viz with tooltips. You start to reuse tests within other tests, saving maintenance time and modularizing your tests with a test as step. At one point, you look up and notice that the development team has been watching you for the last minute and a half. You think, what have I done wrong? When one of the team members says, you saved us hours of work. That bug you submitted just showed us that the image uploader wasn't updating the file location correctly since our service pack went out. We already have the patch out, but let us know if you find anything else. Thanks was implied, and with a pronounced meh by the dev team, everyone resumed their Monday ritual of sprint planning. The fire drill was over, and the support team was still nursing their wounds. You sit back and realize what others soon will that you just made testing agile and the next sprint will go on instead of derailing the grand plan. You go back to work thankful that it was so easy to create your tests and test lists. You just grab the tests you'd like and group them together or you even create a self-maintaining dynamic test list. The test list settings give you tons of options to tweak things in bulk. Settings like base URL to reuse the same test on QA staging and production, or the ability to enable all five executing browsers for the entire list of tests are big time savers and customer favorites. The best part is that you can set your test lists up to run on a regular schedule while you sleep or even make them an integral part of your continuous integration build process. Either way, you'll be able to focus on fixing things instead of finding things for others to fix. And don't forget to enable the email notifications so you can stay one step ahead of the floating honey badgers. Don't forget to also make sure you're testing your Kendo apps with Test Studio Mobile. You can easily create powerful record playback tests for mobile web as well as native mobile applications. Using real devices or emulators you can just instrument your application and attach your device via Wi-Fi or USB to begin testing. 
Test Studio Mobile offers the same type of sophisticated fine logic to work well with the responsive design applications and a myriad of different devices.